wondered if you could help me understand a little bit about the gendered nature of these mm -hmm. dynamics, that mm -hmm. there's different biological processes that might create a different category of experience yeah. for teenage boys and girls for the most part. Yeah. Um, I actually wouldn't say there's, there's very little biological. Yeah. Very little. Um, to the degree that there are biological precursors that set boys down one path and girls down a very distinct other path when yeah. it comes to the nature of how they express their emotions. Um, boys are a bit more active um, starting in yeah. utero and um, that activity can look like aggression as they get into you know toddlerhood and mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of research showing that can easily be channeled into non-aggressive behaviors, but sometimes I think there can be a like, oh, boys will be boys, and then they're allowed to be aggressive yes. in ways that are not kosher. These are yeah. cultural frameworks. These are that... cultural frameworks, yeah. but they're powerful. So the cultural frameworks are hugely powerful, and they start early, and they're surprisingly basic and predictable, which is, you know, mm -hmm. girls are supposed to be you know, warm and tender, and boys are supposed to be tough and invincible. And, and those messages are transmitted very, very powerfully mm. to our kids. And the How early, how early how do early? they feel those differences? Early, early, early. Yeah. And um, I will tell you, though, like the best part about writing a book, and I'm sure you've had this experience, is you end up learning all sorts of things. Yeah. You know, like you go in with the things you mean to say, and then you're like, oh, I thought I was going to say that, but it turns out that's actually, <laughs> when I really, really spend time on it, you know, it changes gears. And for me in writing this book, what I thought I was going to say is, girls get to be vulnerable and, you know, sad. Boys get to be angry and tough. Mm -hmm. The boys piece held up, right, in terms of the cultural scripts and what is allowable for boys. They ride in this in incredibly narrow channel of emotion. Like, I mean, they have one lane and it really, no, two lanes. They, they can express two emotions freely, anger and pleasure at someone else's expense. Like, that's what the culture gives boys. It's oh. horrible. Girls actually enjoy many lanes on their highway. So they get to be sad, they get to be anxious. There's plenty of anger in girls uh -huh. that they show. Um, and that piece was a little less expected for me. Um, there's a huge asterisk on that, which is if you are black, mm -hmm. that is not a safe thing to do. Um, but when we look at the data of the expression of anger in girls, what we see is little boys express more anger than girls do. Adolescent girls express more anger than boys do. Huh. Um, and then, you'll like this. <laughs> I like laughed at this research paper. Except for one form of anger where girls outpace boys all through development, which is the expression of disdain. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, they do. Yeah. And then I was like, God love the researcher who's like, ask about this. <laughs> also ask about who's expressing disdain. I was like, they have a 13 year old daughter, I am sure. <laughs> you know, so. Like, why do I feel condescended to and you're younger than me? <laughs> so, so that's the nature of it. And then, because girls and women are cultivated to talk about feelings, be comfortable expressing feelings, it came as no surprise as I got deeper into this that so often when I would get the question of like, how do I get my son to talk about his feelings? Yeah. It was the mother asking me this. And as I did the work on looking at the research about boys and looking at how by third, fourth, fifth grade at the latest, boys start to feel like, oh, feelings are for girls, toughness is for boys. Then, if the only person, let's say, in this heterosexual family who's asking about feelings is their mother, mm -hmm. they're like, see, proves my point, yeah. feelings are for girls. And so, for me, the big takeaway from writing through those sections was, if we really want boys to talk about their feelings, it actually is the men in their lives who need to be like, hey, buddy, how you feeling? Yeah. And hey, buddy, here's how I'm feeling. Because... I worry now in a new way that all these really well-meaning moms are entrenching the exact thing they are trying to get out. Yes. You know, yes. or trying to, to change. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense to me. I have my child my, with his giant fishy eyes also has my same um, hmm. uh, absolutely jello face, <laughs> like all the feelings. And I keep looking at him kind of wondering when I won't see all this 
the range of feelings because mm. that's it's just one of the most defining quality mm. about modern manhood is mm -hmm. you get like bemusement mm -hmm. and and like meanwhile I'm just like dun, 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 yeah. dun, trying to like get the other yeah. but I just I would one of the things I would really grieve is a is a flatness of affect yeah. when I just see this like technicolor face right now yeah well you'll see you'll yeah. see you know I I am um, I also think there can be home rules and world rules you know, and, and I hate that there end up being world rules for boys, you know, I, I, but I'm also a pretty realistic person, and I think if you say to your, you know, son, you can cry on the playground, there will be no <laughs> ramifications, <laughs> right? Like, that's, that's not honest. But I think there can be conversations where you say, of course you're sad, and of course you're weeping. That's exactly the right feeling at the right time. I think it's really dumb that you can't do this in front of yeah, you know your peers, and if anyone does do it in front of you, you like you're going to be the guy who supports him. Like, I think you can have those conversations, but I don't think it's an all or nothing. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Yeah, you had this um, description of how different—I don't know if the right word, but like disorders, I guess—also mm -hmm. have gendered aspects yes. because our cultural scripts, like box genders yes. in a different way. Could you describe yeah. those for me a bit? Um, so there are a few cardinal rules in psychology, like some things you learn along the way that like no one disagrees with yeah. and you know in the field. And one of them is under distress, girls tend to internalize and boys tend to externalize. Huh. So girls tend to collapse in on themselves and in the extreme it shows up as depression and anxiety disorders. And boys tend to act out, to misbehave, to be hard on others. And Truly, there's minimal biological coding for this. It, it really is, the culture has said, like, these are the, this is what's allowed, mm -hmm. right? You know, girls, if you're upset, you collapse, boys, you act out. And so there's a lot of problems with this. I mean, this, you know. And, <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> yeah, this is not good. <laughs> not a lot of, I don't have this as an adult. This is totally normal. <laughs> not good for anybody. Um, and partly because, you know, we have a lot of boys who are suffering a whole lot, but it's yeah. going seen as you know a disciplinary response as opposed to recognizing that there's a lot of pain underneath. Yeah, because like on the girl side, then we worry about bulimia, anorexia, mm -hmm. nervous kinds of. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Makes me sound 19th century. <laughs> nervous disorders, <laughs> hysteria, traveling womb syndrome. I'm just joking. But like things that yeah. fold yeah. in. Yeah. But like, what is the language then if we were going to like sharpen our focus on? the distressing. Yeah, how do we know when to worry about a boy, right? I mean, I think, so yeah. here, this is hard, because it ends up being anecdotal, right? And, and I don't usually like to hang out in the anecdotal world. Like, I come from the scientific side, I like, like to be like, well, we have a study show this, and study show that, so I will say those things. Um, <laughs> the rumblings, though, and I hear rumblings, right? Yeah. The kinds of things where I'm like, ugh, right, I worry. Yeah. Um, I worry about boys who are spending a lot of time in digital environments that are like, misogyny central I mean like yes. vilely misogynistic and violent video games are an interesting yeah. thing the data don't say what people want the data to say what yeah. people want the data to say is that if your boy plays violent video games or if your kid plays violent video games they will suddenly become violent we actually don't have those data what we do have tells us that they will move up on the violence scale mm -hmm. so if your kid's pretty mellow doesn't do a lot, he may be a little more irritable or something, but yeah. it's not gonna cause him to become very dangerous. If a kid has a lot of trouble with aggression, they should not be playing violent video games. Like, we, we can say that with a lot of confidence. Yeah. Everything in between is murkier, and one of those places where I know what we can say as scientists is not actually as satisfying to parents. Yeah. As I think they wish it were, and actually as I wish it were. Yeah. But um, I worry about that. I worry about, here's the thing I worry about. You can tell this is unfocused. Like, I'm, I'm still, like, no, feeling my it. way. Yeah. Um, suppression of emotion as a default response. Mm -hmm. And the ease with which one can suppress emotion by spending a lot of time online and spending a lot of time gaming. Yes. You know, whatever the gaming is. Yes. Self-soothing in yes. such a flattening way. Yeah. So I think if, you know, if somebody were, like, Tomorrow you need to make a measure that gets at early indicators of distress in boys. Mm -hmm. I think it would move into that neighborhood of yeah. where are you spending the most time online? Mm -hmm. 
How many hours are you playing video games? Mm -hmm. You know, when you're upset, how do you help yourself feel better? Mm -hmm. And having the talking about it, you know, like yes. distraction, 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 you know, like yeah. giving lots of options. Um, we got to pick it up faster yes. in boys than we are. Yeah. Well, it's just even, I was in, sometimes I go to these like structured debates and one of them was about like the kind of version of masculinity created by like, the first sort of come into adulthood generation raised on video games mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that the form of masculinity which when I when I heard your description of like under duress um, like girls might discuss mm -hmm. and then boys might distract mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I thought wow a, a generation very accustomed to a an, an immersive mm -hmm. but also not emotionally dynamic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. like hobby turned self, it just sounded like a self-soothing strategy. Yeah, yeah, I'll just go be on this channel, Yeah. right? Like I'll just go to that channel and then this I don't have to be I on the other down. channel. Yeah. yeah. And, and I will say just um, another thing I learned in, in writing this book, I actually came to be more, I came around a bit on distraction. Like I, 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 yeah. I came to value it more. Because, you know, it's so easy to be like, oh. Yeah, you don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad. Actually. I like this. Yeah, no, and, and, and I'll tell you, um, I think a lot of it was the pandemic, you know, uh -huh. that like, it's how we got through it. it, was like watching as much television as we could. I mean, just trying to yeah. wait the thing out with distractions. And then um, post-pandemic, and I don't know, maybe you have this experience too, I'm like, oh, I distract all the time yes. to, to regulate it's myself. It's great. It's fantastic. I don't want to engage, and I actually need a minute. <laughs> yeah. What I, I've come to see on distraction, I'm like, it's not distraction, it's dosing. Hmm. Um, that's the issue. And I had that thought after the book was done, but it's really improved my, I mean, though I say it essentially in the book, I don't say it that way. Yeah. Um, and dosing is like? It's got to be the right dose. Like enough that yeah. you get the relief you need, but you don't ca cause a whole bunch of new problems. Yeah. You know, and so. <laughs> you <laughs> like, you know, like, set off all the dominoes. Exactly. Like you haven't direction. done your homework and now yeah. you've got a huge problem there. So I, um, I'm having better conversations with teenagers about distraction. Yeah. When, when I make it clear, like, no, I'm totally, like, I think distraction definitely plays a key role in how yeah. we maintain emotional equilibrium. You got to dose it so you're not causing trouble for yourself. And that, yeah. those are more successful conversations. Yeah. yeah.